Hey, what's up, my friend? Good morning. I'm reading this book again. It's been a few days. Um, I was on page. Let me see. Maybe one thirty, some. I'm not sure. I was on chapter fourteen, I think. Letting go of false solidity. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is page one thirty. One thirty one. Actually, one twenty-seven. The inside of one's psyche is a very complex, sophisticated place. It is full of conflicting forces that are constantly changing due to both internal and external stimuli. This results in wide variations of needs, fears, and desires over relatively short periods of time. Because of this, very few people have the clarity to understand what's going on in there. There's just too much happening at once to follow the cause and effect relationship between all of our our different thoughts, emotions, and energy levels. As a result, we find ourselves struggling just to hold it all together. But everything keeps on changing: moods, desires, likes, dislikes, enthusiasm, lethargy. It's a full-time task just to maintain the discipline necessary to create even the semblance of control and order in there. When you are lost and struggling with all these psychological and energetic changes, you are suffering. Why it may not seem to you that you are suffering, compared to what it can be, you are suffering. In truth, the very responsibility of having to hold it all together is itself a form of suffering. You notice this most when things start to fall apart outside. Your psyche goes into turmoil, and you have to struggle to hold your inner world together. But what exactly are you trying to hold it onto? The only things. The only things in there are your thoughts, emotions, and movements of energy, none of which are solid. They are like clouds, simply coming and going through vast inner space. But you keep holding on to them, as though consistency can substitute for stability. The Buddhists have a term for this: clinging. In the end, clinging is what the psyche is all about. In order to understand clinging, we, we must find we must first understand who clings. As you go deeper into yourself, you will naturally come to realize that there is an aspect of your being that is always there and never changes. This is your sense of awareness, your consciousness. It is this awareness that is aware of your thoughts, experiences the ebb and flow of your emotions, and receives your physical senses. This is the root of self. You are not your thoughts. You are aware of your thoughts. You are not your emotions. You feel your emotions. You are not your body. You look at it in the mirror and experience this world through this, its eyes and ears. You are the conscious being who is aware that you are aware of all these inner and outer things. If you explore consciousness, which is your pure sense of awareness, you will see that it really does not exist at any particular point in space. Rather, it is a field of awareness that focuses down to a point by concentrating on a particular set of objects. You can be aware of feeling just one finger, or you can be aware of feeling your entire body at once. You can be totally lost in a th- single thought, or you can be simultaneously aware of your thoughts, your emotions, your body, and your sur- surroundings. Consciousness is a dynamic field of awareness that has the ability to either narrowly focus or broadly expand. When consciousness concentrates narrowly enough, it loses its broader sense of self. It no longer experiences itself as a field of pure consciousness. It begins to relate itself more to the objects it is focused upon. As we have seen, this is what happens when you get so absorbed in a movie that you completely lose the broader sense of sitting in a cold, dark theater. In this case. You have shifted from concentrating on your body and its surroundings to concentrating on the world of the movie. You literally get lost in the experience. This can be generalized to your entire experience of life. Your sense of self is determined by where you are focusing your consciousness. But what determines where you focus your consciousness? 
At the most basic level, it is simply determined by anything that catches your awareness because it stands out from the rest. To understand this, imagine that your consciousness is simply observing vast, empty inner space. Now, imagine that passing through this space is the gentle flow of random thoughts, objects, a cat, a horse, a word, a color, or an abstract thought. They are sporadically floating right through your awareness. Now, let one object stand out above the rest. It catches your attention and draws the focus of your awareness. You immediately realize that the more focused you become on the object, the slower it moves. Until eventually, if you focus on it enough, it stops. The force of consciousness ends up holding the object stable simply by concentrating on it, just as a fish can pass through water but not through ice, which is simply concentrated water. So mental and emo- emotional energy patterns become fixed when they encounter concentrated con- consciousness. The very act of differentiating the amount of awareness focused on one particular object over any other creates clean, and the result of clean is that the selective thoughts and emotions stay in one place long enough to become the building blocks of the psyche. All right, man. Probably uh, get going. It's almost ten, and we are trying to hike the Mingyue Mountain later. So I'm gonna read tomorrow. See you later.